I'm here at HPE Discover in Madrid with Andrew Wheeler, and behind us we've got a prototype of the Gen Z Connects. Can you tell me what's what's uh, what is Gen Z? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Gen Z is a new universal interconnect. Uh, it's uh, governed by a, a consortium body. We've got over 50 members, and uh, basically it's a way to uh, interconnect various you know modules in a system. And for us, it's an important part of our uh, memory-driven computing architecture because it allows us to connect you know, various styles of compute, uh, memory, storage, you name it, uh, to uh, in, in what we call a memory semantic fabric. Uh, now, Gen Z itself has different use cases, and uh, you'll see here on our floor today, we've got a few of those showcased, uh, some for high-end computing, but as it pertains to memory-driven computing, it's kind of that, that memory semantic nature of it is, uh, is, is really kind of one of the, the big values that we're looking to exploit. So, so what's different about it as an interconnect versus other, other solutions? Yeah, so you know, if you look at kind of standard uh, interconnect, whether it be like Ethernet for general networking, maybe InfiniBand or OmniPath for high-performance computing, uh, those are all what we would call a you know kind of I/O domain thing. You know, think uh, uh, you know DMA, you, you know block kind of type movements. Uh, for really kind of highest performance, and you think about the size of the data sets you know that we have coming at us today, you really want to be kind of closer to the native language of the processor, which is a load store operation. So uh, Gen Z gives us that in in an open fashion. So this is kind of taking the view that that uh, having the interconnect be a, a blocker is not really, or, or be proprietary is not really a win for the the customer. Or yeah, or the, and and the reason it's not a win for the customer is uh, because we want that innovation. We want it to come at the rate any company can can bring something online. You don't want it to be gated by, uh, you know whether you know whether it's a processor release or. Uh, you know, even maybe some other, you know, spec you're waiting on. Okay, if you've got a new, again, I kind of keep going back to Accelerator and we can come back to that. Uh, if you've got something new and you think it accelerates a certain problem, look, you want to you want to bring that in and get that into the customer's hands as soon as possible. And so if you just have, if it's just an interconnect you plug into, you're done. You don't have to wait on anyone else. You bring your solution, you know, with your driver, uh, and what other you know other ISV kind of ecosystem with that, and you're ready to go. You don't have to wait on any other 24 month cycle for some other you know piece of silicon to come along. So you keep talking about accelerators. What, yeah, tell me a little bit about that. What we're seeing now is the the, the rise of what we call task specific processing, meaning for certain cases, certain workloads, you can accelerate those workloads by bringing. Uh, something that can really accelerate those particular functions. The kind of the example that's right in front of us today, kind of the poster child for this, is you know kind of using now GPUs to accelerate you know machine learning AI. No longer just draw pixels on a screen, right? Um, and so what we're seeing now is an even kind of greater explosion of that. One of our researchers here at Labs kind of likens this to a, a Cambrian explosion. Of you know, there's uh, of accelerators that are out there right now. You know, there are dozens out there now. At the end of the day, you know that'll get whittled down a little yeah. bit. But the the idea is, is is solid and secure. That look, I can more efficiently uh, address a, a certain type of compute problem in a very specific way, lower energy profile, uh, if if it's purpose built for that. And so that's what we're starting to see through, again, GPUs, FPGAs are certainly a big part of that conversation. So coming back to Gen Z, you said there's a consortium of about 50 companies that are involved in it. Is this, yeah. is this something that is, is already available in market, it's soon to market, or what's the timeline? Yeah, you know, obviously I can't speak for every uh, consortium member course, that, that, that's not, out there. Uh, you know, I can speak for ourselves. I know, you know, we've, we've prototyped, we've got uh, you know some early things that have been out there, kind of testing and kind of proving out uh, the spec. And uh, you know, I, I think you'll you'll see from others. Uh, you know, be a great follow-up question for uh, other consortium members. But uh, version 1.0 of the spec was ratified earlier this year, and uh, 
yeah, there's a lot going on with IP partners, uh, especially on the FPJ front that have already got implementations out there. You can go, uh, go on, online at the website, spec, anyone can download it. And uh, like I said, we've got uh, FPGA modules that are that are ready to go as well. But as far as you know, baking it into hard silicon, you know that's obviously a next next step. And, and different people have you know their roadmaps uh, adjusted accordingly. All right, thanks, Andrew. All right, thanks, Jake.